Hey there, Slump Busters. It is time for episode 80 of the Slump Buster podcast. I'm your host, Juju Talk Sports, and join me on today's pod is going to be Katie Mox of Katie Mox Bets. We talk a whole lot of Niners, so if you're not part of the faithful, you may want to tune out, but we hope you stick around because we break down NFL Week 15 as well. Katie gives some betting advice, and if you're in a slump, betting-wise, it's time to bust it. But before we do that, folks, we got to give a shout-out to the best partners in the game, our partners. And if you got to do some holiday shopping, I strongly suggest you don't be a chump. You use promo code SLUMP. Save yourself a lot of money. Because if you want the perfect gifts to put under that Christmas tree, you're going to start at Manscaped.com. Now, Manscaped is the number one in men's grooming. They have nick-free technology, and they have the perfect package 2.0. What's in the perfect package 2.0? Well, how about the Lawnmower 3.0? And this thing is expertly tested. It is proven to make sure that the downstairs area is perfect for Mrs. Claus coming into the holiday season. Now, I highly suggest you use promo code slump, save yourself tons of money on not just that lawnmower 3.0, but how about the crop reserver, the anti-chafing box of briefs? I'm telling you, they have plenty of stocking stuffers, and I think you need to get some manscaped.com in your life, and you got to use promo code slump to save 20% off, plus free shipping and handling. But if you need a little bit of energy to get you through that Christmas morning, how about using cavemancoffeecode.com? cavemancoffeecode.com, promo code slump. They have nitro cold brew, hibiscus teas, pumpkin spice lattes. They have a lot of great flavors. The mammoth blend, if you really want to get that morning started right, check out cavemancoffeeco.com. But if you need a little bit more money before you go out there and spend on these holiday gifts, why not check out razorsport.com? Now, Razorsport is going to give you money because they're going to give you the right tools to beat Vegas. Beat Vegas. That's what I would call a perfect gift for the holidays. Razorsport, R A Z E R Sport. Dot com. Check them out. They have plenty of free trials going on, and they have a diverse crew of bettors and handicappers who have been betting against Vegas for years and know what it takes to make sure that you are on the right side of that Sunday slate, whether it be the NFL games, we have some NBA starting up, and right around the corner baseball season, Razorsport, R-A-Z-E-R, sport.com. All righty, folks. It's time for the episode. Episode 80, on tap. Hashtag bust the slump. Enjoy. Quiet on the set, make sure my mic is on There is Dre and Juju Dog diving towards the pylon Go for two, so damn rude, recognize authority Spitting tips for fantasy, no way you're outscoring me Bold predictions with conviction every single day Sports addiction, no restriction, kicking game like Pele He's the greatest, what's the basis? Pick an athlete, let's debate this game Outrageous trading places, sudden death, take them pace Turn and shoot, boys the truth, mamba mentality Future greats take their place, dreams become reality Low and outside, knocked it out the park Your boy discovered fire like a rock with a spark Reps acting like Neanderthals, phantom flags, nothing calls Heartbreak losses, tragic falls, every week discuss it all Settle in, listen up Free of time like Andrew Luck, show's about to stop. I suggest you buckle up. What's up, Slump Busters? It is time for episode 80, nice round numbers. Your host, Juju Talk Sports, and I am joined today by Katie Mox, been a big time follower of hers for the last couple months. She's obviously big into Niner Twitter. That's how I came across like her page. And uh, yeah, we're here to lament on uh, what's been a rough 2020 overall for us. Katie, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so I mean, like I said, rough year for the Niners. We are talking a little bit here in the pre-show. Obviously, there's a ton of debates. What's going to happen next, especially at the quarterback position? We've kind of talked about it. Obviously, we're both big-time supporters of Jimmy Garoppolo. And I think what it comes down to for me is the win-loss record with and without Jimmy. Obviously, we're seeing a little rough year with Nick Mullins here. Uh, go ahead and let people know your thoughts. Where are you on this whole thing? Yeah, I am pro Jimmy and it's not just because he's incredibly good looking. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there, but you know, Jimmy Garoppolo is a great quarterback. Is he the greatest quarterback that's ever existed? No, he's not. He's not Patrick Mahomes. There really is only one Patrick Mahomes. And, you know, like you and I were saying in the, in the pre-show, it's that when you have a storied franchise like the 49ers, people are always going to be talking. There's always going to be chatter. It's like, if you think about last season, well, it was Aaron Rodgers and everybody thought he was going to go somewhere and look at the phenomenal season that he's having so far, you know, for years, they were talking about Brady 
Brady and where Brady was going to go. So, you know, the reality is, is that we were 13 and three last season. We made it all the way to the Super Bowl. It was not entirely Jimmy Garoppolo's fault. Um, you know, we were simply outplayed in the second half. And I think play calling and some other things definitely went into that. But like you said, we win with Jimmy Garoppolo and we don't without him. And that's not a huge dig against Mullins either. I think for a backup quarterback, he's done okay. Um, you know, uh, last week he didn't look great, but a couple weeks ago he had some moments. Um, but no, I'm, I'm pro Jimmy and I would be surprised if we move away from him. And, you know, Shanahan has said he will be our quarterback next season. So I do, I do think we're going to hold on to him. Is he our long-term solution? Maybe not, but I think for a few more years. Where would you put that like percentage on him starting week one at? I think I'm kind of in that 70% range at the moment myself. I would, I would even bump him higher. I would say 80%. I mean, if he's healthy, I don't see why he wouldn't start. And I think, you know, there's been some chatter that maybe he would be healthy at the end of this season, but I don't think they'll, I don't think they'll call him out. Well, let's talk about those names are kind of getting tossed around if they did move on Um, right now. So Matthew Stafford will be one of the veteran targets they're putting out there. There's even people that are throwing out, Hey, let's take a chance. Let's go after Sam Darnold. His value has to been dropped by a little bit. Oh, that face kind of says it all right there. Not Sam a big Darnold. No. You're from LA. Shouldn't you be big on your USC community? Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> nah, fight you've seen him close it. enough. All right. Fair enough. Um, and then there's obviously going into the draft, going into the rookie options. We are talking about the mocks. Zach Wilson's probably more in our range. Uh, Trey Lance is another guy. I wouldn't be yeah. down for Mac Jones personally and some of the other quarterbacks I've seen tossed around there. I, I think the problem is obviously Jimmy, as much as we want to talk about just the statistics, 22 and eight with Jimmy five and 14, I guess now after the loss of the football team without him, mm-hmm. he has missed 19 starts. And that definitely is concerning. Um, my only thing on that is it's hard to say injury prone when they're all different injuries, right? Like ACL tear, That's not connected to a high ankle sprain, which isn't connected to a throwing shoulder. If it was a consistent, let's say he keeps pulling his hammy and everything, I would say injury prone, but he's just having these freak injuries that keep happening. And obviously now with the pass protection being what it is, I know Matt Matt, (laughs) McGlinchey has come under fire in recent weeks um, in particular. Um, Well, I think with this season too, if we think about, I mean, there's been soft tissue injuries all throughout the league. Obviously, when you cut down on training camp and all of the things with with COVID, it's hard to say. And and there's that talk right now with Kittle, even I know we're talking about the quarterback now being injury prone. Um, And I think Kittle's actually more injury prone than Jimmy is, to be honest. Uh, He's my favorite player, though, so I'm not going to say too much bad about Kittle. But I do think that this season, it's hard to it's hard to give an injury prone um, you know, title on anyone when the entire league is injured right now, certainly with those soft tissue injuries. And I think that there's a lot more that goes into that than just their bodies. Well, the entire league, but mostly the Niners, obviously at one point we had 90 million on uh, injured reserve. Yep. What do you think that is? We, I've had this debate like a ton on between 49 reasons and the slump bus. You're like, what are we doing here? Why, why is it that this team is so banged up? Because yes, we were in the Super Bowl last year, but we still had injuries then. And even before that, you look at some of their other Kyle Shanahan seasons, it's like, wow, we lead the league in ACL just over the last five years. How oh, do, you- do we? I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, that's a legit statistic. That's not a statistical category you want to exactly be leading in. Um, it's kind of ironic, though, if you look at this season, uh, Jason Barrett, J- Jarek McKinnon have managed to stay healthy while everyone else is yep. hurt. <laughs> Right, exactly. I mean, I do think that we have seen a decline in the O line for sure and the protection. So I feel like, you know, for, for Jimmy, that's been um, an issue. We hated to see Staley go, even though it was certainly time for him to retire. Uh, I didn't know that we lead the league in ACL injuries. That's wild. Um, I do know that, what was it? Was it the Jets or the Giants game, the second game of the season when we just got completely wiped out? And I feel like, you know, we've never just recovered from that. Point. And, you know, we can say things about the turf or whatever it is, but I think when you start out and you have that many of your key starters that go down in the beginning, it's really hard to catch up from there. And then you have guys that are coming in, maybe not at hundred percent, or you have people from the practice squad coming out. So I, I just, I think we just had been dealt a, a bad hand this year. And I think a lot of teams have a lot of injuries. We probably have the most, but I mean, you look at Dallas when what happened to them or a lot of teams are really, really injured. So 
beyond the stat that you just gave me, which is, by the way, blowing my mind about the ACLs and Kyle Shanahan, what do you think about that? Like, is that a way that the scheme of the offense that's leaving us open to more injuries? Well, when, when you mentioned scheme, that actually is po- a possibility. Certainly when you look at this mass, last game, Debo Samuel, one snap in, goes down with a hammy injury. Um, obviously, Debo is a player that's been banged up a lot throughout this year because yep. y- yards after catch, there's a cost to yards after the catch. You have yep. to barrel through guys. You got to be physical. You got to get in there. Obviously, George Kittle, we talked about him. Um, the first injury this year, yeah, that might have been on Jimmy. Obviously, it was a bad throw. Yep. Kittle went up in the air. Buda Baker made a legal tackle, and it hurt him. Um, yep. But overall, you're right. I mean, Kittle's a little bit more banged up than uh, most players, and it is concerning because he just signed that big deal. That was one of the big things I was talking about whenever he did sign that extension. Yep. He's a tight end. Tight ends don't stay healthy in the league. Look at Gronk's career. Right. Uh, Travis Kelsey has been an exception. The fact he's been able to stay on the field pretty consistently. And Kittle's got to maybe talk, do some soul searching to figure out what Kelsey's doing to stay on the field. Um, right. I would say as far as what's causing that, it, it's hard to say because before the Super Bowl year, they literally fired the entire training staff. They fired doctors. They fired people that have been on the staff for years, strength and conditioning coaches. And you would say, it kind of worked. We made it to the Super yeah. Bowl that year. There has to be some kind of um, mix, but does causation, um, does is it a causation because of that? Or is it, uh, we just had, great luck that year the, right. none of our key players managed to get hurt um I don't know I, I think maybe it just Kyle's got to look at what we're doing in practices and how we're preparing throughout the week maybe it could just be we're drafting and signing injured guys because yeah Kyle well Tender to, had a thing too right and to your point with Kittle I mean there's a reason why he went in the fifth round because he was injury prone even in college so that was kind of a risk um, that we took on, but he's such a dynamic player. And I think that he'd be having an incredible year. Uh, I know that Kelsey is breaking all kinds of records and, and I'm sure that's just eating at Kittle, just waiting to get out here again. Um, so I'm not ready to give up on him quite yet. And in terms of firing everybody and having it work last season, you got to think too, I mean, conditioning was cut down to almost nothing this year. And I, we see now how important training camp is and having a preseason because that level of physicality that you have to play, you know, at elite level in football, you need to practice. You need that time. You need that conditioning. So I, I do think it's a lot to do with this season, particularly. Well, we got to evaluate now moving forward. Is yep. the Niner Super Bowl still open? Because obviously we just signed Kyle Shanahan to the six year extension. Mm-hmm. We have Kittle around for a while and we're still deciding on what we're doing with Jimmy Garoppolo. Meanwhile, in the background, our entire defensive backfield, um, Richard Sherman's probably gone. We got to re- decide if we want to re-sign Jason Verrett, mm-hmm. Kwan Williams, all these guys. Um, it's getting tight as far as the money situation. It kind of reminds me of that like 2014 year in which we were trying yeah. to figure out stuff with Balky, Harbaugh, and that whole mess. Oh, I, have, I have a funny Balky story, actually. But I... Um... As, as far as the, the salary cap, yes. And I was surprised in the last draft that we didn't try to get a cornerback higher than we ended up taking one because Richard Sherman and, you know, I hated Richard Sherman when he was taking a bite of the turkey leg, you know, I was at that game. And then when he came on board, you know, you love him. He's a locker room guy. I think he's a great leader for the team. Um, but when you watched him in the Super Bowl again, against the Kansas City wide receivers. I mean, his age just really showed. Um, And then, you know, he got injured this season. And by the way, we didn't even talk about him for a lot this season. He was supposed to come back in three games and he was out for most of the season. And then he came back and again, it's been a little bit slow. So I appreciate that he understands that we're probably gonna part ways with him, but I definitely think our secondary needs a lot of work. Well, that's concerning because you would say, even though he has shown his age, he still is probably the best cornerback on the team. So when you're team, yes. Yeah. So you don't want to be in a situation where you have no cornerbacks and then you don't re-sign your best cornerback and then you're relying on rookies. We don't want to rely on rookies when we have to deal with Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, DeAndre Hopkins, and Kyler Murray. Um, This is not the division to not have any defensive backs. And I know that our pass rush is going to be a little bit better when we get Nick Bosa back, obviously. Well, let's up. Speaking of injury from, let's hope that Nick Bosa stays healthy consistently throughout his career, because yeah. if you look at his Ohio State career and even his high school football career, he had injuries back then. That was a concern of him coming into the draft. And we've got lucky his rookie year. Let's call it what it is. We got lucky yep. that he didn't have any Knicks. Remember in the Vikings game when he went down with like a, 
got the wind knocked out of him and everyone yes. just kind of collectively held their breath in the stadium. <laughs> yes. And then we were cheering his name. He loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so the Jets game where he went down with ACL, a part of me was almost expecting it. As much, yeah. as much as I hate to say it, I was partially like, as soon as I saw him go down, I'm like, you know what? This is going to be it. This is going to be an ACL, isn't it? And sure yeah. enough. Um, and then we get Solomon Thomas there too. Uh, the Niners have such a tough thing. So I guess when we are looking forward to that draft, um, where would you put your priority? Because right now we're sitting at 12. Um, if we win another game the rest of the year with Nick Mullins, and hey, I'm going to be at this uh, next game here. I'm going to be in the stadium to see them play the Cowboys. So hopefully we do get a win. Yeah. Hopefully, or that's going to be a long yeah. trip back to Austin, Texas here for me in the car. Yep. Um, especially since uh, originally from New Mexico. So all the fans out there in New Mexico are Cowboys fans. So okay. no, I'm going to eat that one on. I'm going to eat that yes. out on social media <laughs> on the right if yeah. that happens. Um, but we're looking at top 15 probably. Yeah. That, should that go to pass protection? Should that go to um, our defensive back system? Or again, the quarterback debate as it stands right now. You know, uh, I, I still think that we have a, a solid quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo. I think we have to at least give him one more season. If he gets injured again or whatever happens, then then I would think that we would look at that a little bit more seriously. I do think that Nick Mullins is a solid backup quarterback, right? He's not a starter. He's never going to be a starter, but he does have his moments. And I think he works in Shanahan's system well. Um, you know, I, I do think our pass protection is probably the weakest part um of our defense we're pretty strong uh up front especially if we get our big guys back um but i i would look to that i would yeah. look to that i mean i think the interior line we should have known going into the year when chris jones was just tearing us apart in the super bowl that was gonna be a problem yeah and sure enough it, it's shown signs i mean trey williams has looked good and obviously that's another big guy we got to resign too but yeah oh, hey right spot. Okay. i mean Brandon he's been okay you? yeah Let's talk about Brandon Ayuk. Let's just uh, end it on a positive note here, right? I, Brandon Ayuk's a stud. He is a stud. And you know, to be honest, when, when we drafted him at first, I was a little bit, I hadn't looked too much into him. So I was kind of like, okay, that seems like maybe a, a weird decision, but he has been such a stud, especially when he did that crazy leap in to get the touchdown. I mean, he's been such a boost to our offense. I've, I've read too that him and Debo get along really well and have a good relationship. So uh, yeah, and no, I'm super, super excited about him. And I think when we get our other kind of star players in around him, that he'll just be even more explosive. Can Jumpman sponsor him? I know, I know. that would grab, be great. Yes. I was disappointed a couple of weeks ago against the Bills that he didn't finish that 360 dunk. I, I uh, thought, he, ah, just finish it. Just ah, you're yep. right there, man. Yep. Uh, but no, oh, he, God, that was a tough game. Yeah, I, I this, I mean, come on, we losing to the football team when we only they didn't even score an offensive touchdown. That's how bad yep. that game was. We had the Mullins yep. pick six and then we had the fumble. And like you said, when it comes to Mullins, the only thing I kind of get on is that Niners Twitter at the start of the year. Mm -hmm. And hey, I've had Grant uh, Grant Cohen on the podcast before and okay. I love his takes. But the, one of the worst ones is that Mullins and Garoppolo are replaceable. You look at the records, not at all. You look no. at them in the pocket presence, not at yep. all. It, it, even though Jimmy's not above throwing a bad interception, some of the ones that Nick Mullins has thrown this year, like uh, yeah, God, the one obviously this week, and then that Eagles game, that was the one of the worst. Oh my God, oh. I was. Yeah, no, M Mullins definitely, I think Jimmy will have bad moments, but he can recover from it. Mullins has full on bad games, but again, he's a backup quarterback. Like how, who, who else's backup quarterback are we talking about as if they're a starter or as if they're going to be as good as their starter? None of them are. We could sign not even the ones that used to be starters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I either way. I mean, hopefully next year we stay, we have a positive clean bill of health and I think we can still get back into that championship window. We just, Oh, I, abs I absolutely think we can get back in there. If we are healthy, I, I totally trust in Shanahan and in Lynch and, and the team that they've created and the depth that we have. I just think we had too many injuries, okay? It, it can't be necessarily that deep, but it was for a long time kind of next man up. And I do think that we have held our own given the amount of injuries that we've had. I mean, we were totally blown out, I guess, by the the Eagles, but we've kept it kind of close in some of these games that, I mean, we beat the Rams still. So I have faith in us, but I'm a 49er faithful. So I always do. Hashtag FTTB. 
faithful to the bay. We got yes. this. Even if the bay yes. kicks us out. That's another thing too. We got Wait, the bay's bay. not kicking us out. What do you mean? Where, well, you, for that? at least three weeks there. Uh, oh, know. yes. Uh, well, yeah, San Jose is, or Santa Clara County. I'm from San Jose originally, Santa Clara County. Yeah, they're just a little intense on the COVID stuff. A little bit. I mean, I get it. I get it. Don't get me wrong. But my thing on that one was just, obviously the Niners, they're a big industry. They're pumping millions into the thing. Yeah. If, if anything was to happen, I'm sure that they can take care of like their employees, their staff. Well, but know. the reality is, is they're already kind of in a bubble. It's a professional sports team. They're already testing more than anybody else does. They're doing everything that they can. I don't necessarily think they're infecting the community. You don't have fans there already. Like it, it seemed like a ridiculous step to me. And I know that even the San Jose Sharks had a hard time trying to figure out where to practice. And it was just kind of like... I don't know. I don't know what the, nobody knows what the right thing to do is. Right. But no. as long as you're trying to save lives, that's the side that we have to be on. But um, it did annoy me that there's, there was all the faithful to the Bay, but then they couldn't change the end zone. I know beggars can't be choosers, but that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Arizona. We still hate you, but thank you at least for the last thank couple of weeks. Um, yes. Okay. This is message brought to you by the foundation for a perfect package. Why do I need Manscaped? Why do I need Manscaped? Why do I need Manscaped? Because the only fruit I want is the one up top. Because being in a relationship is not an excuse to be lazy. Because I like talking ball, not smelling like them. Because deforestation is proven to prevent forest fires. Manscaped is the only brand dedicated to below the waist grooming. Manscaped's Crop Preserver guarantees that you smell your best all day long. Manscaped boxer briefs are the most comfortable underwear on the market. Manscaped's advanced skincare technology makes NYX a thing of the past. Manscaped is the number one in men's grooming. Subscribers get two free blade refills every three months. Get 20% off plus free shipping handling with the promo code SLUMP at manscaped.com. That's the promo code SLUMP at manscaped.com. Get your lawnmower 3.0 today. We are the Slump Busters. And we approve this message. I'm LeBron James. No, I'm not. But I'm the king when it comes to sports betting. Bet Razor. Razorsport.com. Okay. Yeah. Well, Katie, you've been making a name for yourself, obviously, and like uh, sports betting, obviously, yeah. Katie Mox bets, that's your IG handle. And you actually were previewing tonight's game. In fact, tell me about your interest in sports betting. Like, is, How did I get into it? Yeah. So uh, I am a self-proclaimed uh, sports enthusiast and a degenerate gambler in nice packaging. And so basically, I've just, I've been a football fan and I've been a 49er fan my entire life. I've been a season ticket holder for the Niners, even though I live in Los Angeles, I fly home except for the season to pretty much all games. It's me and my dad and my two brothers. Um, and so I grew up as a 49ers fan. I love 49ers. One, I just love football. Two, it's what I do with my family. And, you know, you always hear that saying football is family and they're really talking about the players, but I think, and I'm not sure it's probably the same with your family. It's really what we do together. And if we're not at the games together, then we're on a group chat talking about everything from the draft to, you know, the games and, and whatnot. So I've always had a deep love for football and the 49ers, um, but I wasn't, I wasn't gambling. I had to play a little bit of fantasy. Uh, and actually how I got into it is through Bob Mennery. And so he's a... Um, a personality on, on Instagram. He would get mad if I called him an influencer. He's a comedian, but he had a podcast that he was starting called the Ripper Magoo podcast. And they were auditioning girls who were interested in sports, uh, knew a little bit about sports and that lived in Los Angeles. And so I auditioned to be a part of the podcast and ended up making it all the way to the end. I lost to a girl who was a professional soccer player uh, and had like a hundred thousand followers and was an Olympian. So like, if you're going to lose to anybody, I guess that would make the most sense. Um, but he still wanted to work together. And so at that time he had a show called the gambling show. Um, so I worked with him and, and this guy to me bounced back and we did some gambling content for, um, for the gambling show. And I really liked it and I got super hooked on it. And so I decided to keep up the Katie Mox bets and I do, you know, a few times a week, I I'll give my, I'm not a, I'm not a handy capper either. And that's what I like to tell people. I'm not selling my picks. Um, I just 
like to give my game analysis. I love football and I like to kind of tell people what I'm doing. And then I, what's most fun for me is just relating to people who are winning and losing every week like I am. I mean, sports betting and certainly in the NFL is incredibly unpredictable. And then this season with all of the injuries and the COVID, I mean, it's like every game is almost a trap game, right? It's been one of those wild seasons we've ever seen. Um, but you know what? I really, I love doing it. I just, I love talking about football and I love interacting with other sports fans. So tell me, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Yeah. Are you in the red or green this year? I'm in the red this year. I am, you know, I started, I killed it in the beginning. I was killing it in the beginning. And then I was only losing Thursday nights, but I was still doing pretty good on Mondays and Sundays. And I'm not betting every single game either, right? And and I, and then they're low, low wagers. I'm not going crazy. Um, and then I just, then I was on a cooler. I was on a crazy cooler. I finally snapped my cooler a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then it's just been kind of hit or miss, but it's, it's the games that you think are going to go a certain way and really should go a certain way that just end up crazy. So, uh, but a lot of people that I talked to this season has been tough. Yeah. I mean, obviously without the fan attendance, home field advantage, what does that really even mean? I know Vegas usually likes to give the plus three or sorry, the minus three to the home team, but um, yeah. You can't even really do that when you don't even have a fan thing. Obviously, we, we were just talking about the Niners. We went on a big thing yeah. there. They're like, what, were one in five before having to do the Arizona shift? Right. I, well, and then the Niners had to play. We had nine people on the COVID list. And it's it's just been it's just been crazy. But I think in general, and I think what makes betting NFL and just watching NFL is that any given Sunday, anything can happen. And the way that the draft is, is that there isn't a crazy amount of talent on every single team. So even the worst teams are capable of beating the best team once a season. Would you say football is probably like the only sport you could really like bet on like productively? Because I feel like basketball, baseball, they don't really lend themselves to betting in the same way. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I've never bet on the um, baseball. A lot of people say that that's kind of more of a sure bet. It's a lot of money line stuff. Um, I enjoy football the most. So I definitely watch those games and I understand football the most, but I did start betting on the NBA and I actually, I did pretty well um, in the NBA. It's, you know, the point spreads are large, right? Cause they just, it's like in another one and another one and another one. Um, but, but it's fun. And, and, and I think betting just makes everything more interesting. And that's why I really like it. You start to learn other players more. There was a time where I really only knew a lot about the Niners or the NFC West division. Um, and now I kind of have much more of a broad understanding because I'm doing a lot of research and trying to figure out what the bets are, which I know a lot of people do with fantasy. And the same with basketball. I wasn't a huge basketball fan, but now that I've started gambling, I like basketball more. It's more interesting to me. Do you have a favorite bad beat from the season? Because there's been a couple in the recent weeks. Uh... Oh, I mean, obviously the, the Browns and I didn't, I didn't bet that game. Thank God. Um, but that, that safety in the end, I mean, that's gotta be one of the worst, they were just going in the wrong direction. Probably one of the worst bad beats um, of the season. I did see that FanDuel was um, giving people their money back on that one, which I thought was actually kind of nice and good marketing because they're just going to lose it with you later. Um, but that I think was the worst bad beat. Do you gamble? I actually really don't. I So okay. I top out at uh, fantasy football myself. Mm -hmm. um, maybe because for myself, I feel like I'm good at fantasy football. I mean, not to brag, yep. false, false slump buster. Slump Buster Fantasy yep. Football Podcast. Just saying. <laughs> but um, anyway, you know, uh, because I, I've been doing it since I was age seven. My dad kind of brought me into fantasy football, and that's how I've been kind of like into it. Um, I used to always go to Vegas with my uh, grandpa back when he was a uh, VIP at the Stardust Casino, back when that was cool. still outstanding. It's funny to watch that, watch the movie Casino years later and realize that was a big mob casino because I'm like, man, I was just enjoying Circus Circus. And meanwhile, people are getting their <laughs> fingers broken underneath the lobby. <laughs> uh, totally. But yeah, no, like as far as like sports betting, I've gotten more into it. Obviously, we have a sponsor who's um, a sports better sports cool. betting system. So like, cool. um, I've gotten more in tune with it over the years. And I'm sorry, I, I love listening to like, for example, uh, the Blazing Five for Colin mm -hmm. Cowherd. I love listening love to RJ Bell. Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. just trying to learn how pe people think, learn how betters mm -hmm. think. Um, yeah. Because it does kind of add a little intrigue to my game, even if my personal money is not on the line. I think I might start throwing some small stuff out there here and there. We'll, we'll see. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, got to have money to spend money to lose money. So <laughs> yes, that's the thing. And that's why, I mean, obviously you should always gamble responsibly. I'm, I'm I always have, you know, small, small wagers on things and, and, and you can't gamble every single game. And if you're in a cooler, you should probably lay off a little bit like tonight. 
I was looking at it and, and that's to your point too. I like the research of it all. I love looking at the trends. I love, you know, looking at the numbers and the injury reports and, you know, just trying to, for lack of a better word, I guess, handicap the game myself. I always kind of look at things from more of like a football standpoint and the teams. I'm not huge into the analytics, which I know a lot of like professional handicappers um, are into, but, you know, with tonight's game, it's like, you would think that this would go over. I think it's at 53 and a half. And these are two pretty terrible defenses. I think it's the Raiders are ranked number 30 and um, the Chargers are 27. But Wait, you don't think Paul Gunther game fired just totally changes the Raiders defense? Like, come on, Katie. Well, see, but that's, you know, what's so funny is that I was talking to one of my handicapper friends the other day and he said, basically, whenever a coach gets fired, you should hammer that team because that usually does light a fire under their ass. Um, so that's, that is, that is a good point. But, you know, Thursday nights also are sloppy. Right. I mean, all Thursday night games for the most part have been pretty sloppy and lower scoring and 53 and a half is pretty high for a Thursday night. Um, so I, I, I'm laying off that one. I think the, the Raiders should win this game. I think they're at three or three and a half, depending on on where you got it. But um, Chargers like to keep things close. So win or lose. Keep things close. All games except that Patriots game they had a couple of weeks ago. But, yeah, no, um, 43 to nothing. Yeah. Yeah, that was a ugly mess, and I wasn't expecting that. Um, so we already put out kind of like who we our start sit for the week, and I said Justin Herbert is a definitely start for yep. me this week. I would say, yeah, I'm actually picking the Chargers in this game to go over. I think that the Raiders mm-hmm. have been a little bit lost in recent weeks, and as much as I would love to give them totally. the boost because of the um, defensive coordinator firing, mm-hmm. I, I just feel like they've just been on this like slow trajectory downward. And I, but they I, have to win this game. They do. They have to be the desperate team in this matchup. But part of me just thinks that also, too, a little bit of pride for Anthony Lynn. He needs to start game right, too, because um, people are starting to come after his job. And rightfully so, with that time management situation he had in the Falcons game, who's running with no timeouts at the end of a half? He has, he has single, I mean, there's so much talent on, on the Chargers team, you know, Herbert is actually had a kind of a little breakout season, even though they haven't won. I mean, he showed a lot of promise, even more so in some ways than, than Burrow did. But, um, but I feel like Lynn just finds a way to lose all of the game. So he should, he should be in hot water and his game should be, or his job should be on the line. Yeah. I really wanted to like him after hard knocks. I thought like, oh man, this guy, this guy's a leader. There's something there, but Especially too, like obviously there's the element of you want to give the benefit of the doubt to a minority head coach in the time in which we don't have a lot of strong minority head coaches, but you just have to look at the results. And at the point, at this point, the results aren't there for the chargers to keep him another year. And yeah, if anything, Eric B is out there, you know, or how I've heard urban Meyer's name thrown out there. That'd be interesting. Do you think he would, you think he would leave? You know, this is such a good situation, though. You know, yeah. Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, one of the best wide mm-hmm. receivers in the league. You have a star mm-hmm. pass rusher in Joey Bosa. Derwin awesome. James, if he stays healthy. The mm-hmm. Chargers have a lot there. And if you were ever going to go pro, Urban, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this is just the perfect situation, honestly. Yeah. L.A., too. Big market for you. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what his health concern is. Obviously, that was a big reason why he had to even leave Ohio State. Not just the scandal. There was a little right. bit of scandal there, but... He also had um, something going on here, but I've heard that he was actually really close to taking the UT job, which would have been cool for me, obviously, being here in the community. Right, Um, yeah. But what happened was UT wanted to offer him a godfather offer, and he basically said no. So uh, he didn't want to do his third college tour, I guess. And I would say, yeah, college is a little bit harder than the pros. Obviously, you have to do recruiting. You have to do more coaching. You know, I mean, there's there's a in the pros, there's a lot more of a break than there is in at the college level. I don't know. Yeah. Either way. Uh, so that, yeah, I guess that's a good Thursday night game. And you saying you don't want to bet money makes sense. It's a Chargers game. Don't bet money on Chargers. It's a Chargers game. The only thing that I was kind of interested in, I think it's at, I think it's at minus 150 is Derek Carr over one and a half passing touchdowns. Um, mm-hmm. You think about the the Chargers defense, even though they, they have their moments, right? They held the Falcons, I believe, to just 17 points last weekend, but they've been blown out before too. So they're kind of hit or miss. And I believe that Carr has hit two um, passing touchdowns 
uh, two or more in nine of the last 13 games. So I think that's at minus 150. I'm toying around with that one, but Thursday night has been so unlucky for me that I think maybe I'll just enjoy watching it on television. Don't bet on Thursday, folks. That is the yeah. one takeaway I could give for you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yes. let's go into the Sunday games a little bit here. Um, so is there an over under on how far Josh Allen could throw a ball in mile high stadium? Because Buffalo is going to be playing in Denver this week. And uh, I, I think that should be a line. I think that should be a prop bet out there. Well, I'm sure it is. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it is right now, but yeah, I mean, Josh Allen has been having an incredible year and, and so much credit goes to the Bills organization for really building around him. You know, he struggled the last couple of years, but he's coming to his own and, and I hadn't been paying too much attention to the Bills until we played them the other night and we just could not stop them. And, you know, even with all of our injuries, I, I still thought that we had, you know, a, a little bit of a threat uh, defense, but not really. I mean, Josh Allen is incredible. Yeah, I mean, that Stefan Diggs acquisition is one of the best trades Huge. in the offseason because off season because it really um, put him and that higher echelon of tiers. Like if you were having a draft of all the quarterbacks right now, I'm saying they're all free agents, they're all out there, age doesn't matter, whatever. Mm -hmm. You would probably say Josh Allen is top five, if not top would, three. I mean, I I'm just, obviously we all know Mahomes is one, but yeah. once you get down that list, it's like uh, yeah. you get into Sean versus Josh Allen, you get into that Russ versus Josh Allen. Yeah, I, I got to give it to Josh Allen. And speaking of this, just this game as a whole. So mm -hmm. the Bills are minus six going into Denver. Denver's played tough and mile high. I usually like to give them a little bit of a boost, but the Bills, I mean, obviously they know how to play in inclement weather. They yeah. should be fine. Uh, the Bills are going to roll in this game. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I would take them minus six for sure, especially as we're getting into the playoffs. I feel like they're much more motivated. They've really, really gotten into their groove and, and they're just killing it. And I, and I, the Broncos have just kind of had like a, not a great season. I mean, obviously with the quarterback situation that happened and they came out and they, they got, you know, they played well, but no, I, I would take the Bills for sure. I would take the Bills almost from here on out. I don't know what the rest of their schedule looks like, but I think the Bills will give the, the Chiefs a run for their money. It'd be close. I mean, well, you know, the Chiefs got to lose a couple more games. I, I think the Chiefs are going to roll to that one seed, but I wouldn't be surprised if you told me that's the AFC championship game right there. I, th I think that's going to be the AFC championship game. I, I really do. And it's just so funny because I the, the NFC West used to be what I called like the, the real Super Bowl. And, and this year, the, the AFC has really kind of come alive more than it has in the last few years. I think it's just all the quarterbacks are starting to go to the AFC at this point. And I think that's yeah. kind of where the power dynamic has shifted. In fact, yep. Trevor Warren, so let's face it, he's going to be a jet next year. So he's going to be yeah. over there too. Um, okay. Well, you know, this is another team. This next game has a team that's tough for betting purposes because they just love to cover. That would be mm -hmm. the Carolina Panthers going into Lambeau to face the Packers. This might be the first game with Christian McCaffrey back, which would be huge if you are a fantasy football owner and you haven't had Christian McCaffrey all year long. And if you're still in the yep. playoffs, not having Christian McCaffrey, Kudos to you. Yep. Uh, Packers are eight and a half point favorites in this Ooh. game. Um, with a line that large, Katie, how are you feeling? Uh, uh, I will. I think the Packers win this game. Eight and a half. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'd give them the more than a touchdown if Christian McCaffrey comes back. Um, eight and a half seems seems. What's the over under? What's the? I would go. I would go over on this game. 51 and a half. Uh, yeah, I can see that because the Panthers yeah. can put up points. Teddy Bridgewater has been having a good year. And if, yeah. again, if they get one of their best offensive pieces back, that should help a ton. Yeah, yeah, I would say, I would say no to the eight and a half and I would probably go for the over. Okay. And just picking the game, I guess, uh, Packers, Packers should be Packers, fine here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see here. So next up AFC South, uh, the Buccaneers are going into Atlanta. The Bucks are six point favorites. Uh, you know, it hasn't been the greatest year, obviously, for Tampa Bay. They were expecting to just come in and roll. They have all these weapons. AD's on their team. Mike Evans on their team. But it, it just hasn't looked pretty. There's been moments in which, obviously, Arians and Tom Brady have kind of been at each other's necks. Mm -hmm. And as far as the Falcons go, you'd say they've been playing a little bit tougher under Raheem Morris. Are they going to lose a second game to Tampa? Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you hit on the, on the head as far as – you know, Tom Brady has been kind of regressing for a while now. So the fact that people thought he was just going to get into Tampa Bay and all of a sudden they were going to be Super Bowl contenders, I always thought was just a little off um, and, you know, getting Gronk back and all the things. And yeah, they have a lot of offensive weapons, but their defense has really been hit or miss. It's either they're completely 
lights out or they kind of get run all over. And so I think that Brady's had a hard time learning the the new system. And and I also think that Arians is not um, is not the kind of coach that is good for Tom necessarily. And I feel like a lot of the structural things that Tom is used to certainly with Belichick haven't been in place in Tampa. And there's been some kind of friction there. Uh, what did you say? The line was six, six points. Yeah. Tampa Bay. Six minus points. Six. Um, I, yeah, the Falcons have had a little bit of an uptick, but I would, I would still give, I would still give the points to the bucks um, on this one. And I think they have been playing a little bit better, but um you know, the Bucks are, are still in it. And so I think they need to win, you know, from here on out for the most part. I think what concerned me though, is how they came off that bye. Obviously, if it wasn't for yeah. Dan Bailey missing four field goals, the Vikings would have been very much not only in play, but could have won that game potentially. And I, the Vikings are, the Vikings are a good team, you know, they are, they are, but I think they're at that same level where you would say that the Falcons are, I mean, obviously those two teams played a few weeks ago and it was a very close competitive game. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why I'm kind of like definitely concerned for Tampa again, going into this game. I'm going to give Tampa's them not Tampa's not a lock. I, I don't, yeah. I, I bet on them a couple times this season and they have been just like very hit or miss. So I probably pass this game, but I think Tampa wins. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'll go with you. I'll stick with yeah. you on Tampa winning. I, I don't think that this is the time of the year for a upset for them. And I don't think they can overlook the Falcons. Now, no. Let's go. So going into this next game, as I mentioned, I'm going to be live in the stadium for this one. The Niners going into Dallas to face the Cowboys. Niners are three point road favorites. Uh, technically, they've been on the road for the last four weeks. So I guess why not? They should <laughs> yeah. be accustomed to it. Um, but uh, God, I, it's just we again, we, we talked about this all at the start of the episode here. I can't put trust in Nick Mullins as, to win us games like um, no. And maybe it's not even good that we win games at this point. I'd love to beat the Cowboys. I think that should be the priority to beat a team yep. like the Cowboys. But at the bare minimum, what you could say for them, you look at the yeah. offensive weapons they still have, and the Cowboys have a lot more in place to win a game like this than the Niners currently do, especially if Debo's out. And is Mostert is Mostert in? I believe Mostert is still in. I saw a questionable tag last time I was looking at him, mm -hmm. um, but. We should be able, you know what? Okay, I'm going to give it to the Niners. I'm going to be in the stadium. I'm going to hope that we got some good juju from Juju Talk Sports on the stadium for them. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and say Niners, they win this game. Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson Jr. Just got to run all over that defense. That's the key to winning this game. That's the only way we win this game. Obviously, we can't trust Mullins to, to make any big big passes. He, again, he, he has a moment here and there, but for the most part, we can trust that he will unfortunately get a pick. Um, so Raheem, I think we'll have a monster game if he's in, he always does. Um, you know, it, it, did you say Debo is in or Debo's not in? Debo's out. He's oh, Debo's probably out. out for the rest of the year. Okay. Well then there's that, but I do think if we're going to win any game from here on out, this is probably the only chance that we have to do it. So I'm always faithful. I always believe in the Niners, but and as a rule of thumb, I never actually bet on the 49ers because there was one time where I did and we won the game, but we didn't cover. And so then I wasn't happy and it was just not worth it for me. Um, but I, I'd like to say that we have a chance to win this game, but no, I don't, I don't feel a hundred percent about it. I mean, Mullins, Mullins had, he looked kind of good and then he looked terrible. And so I just don't trust that he's going to be consistent enough to do this. Yeah, if you told me CJ came in at halftime, I believe you okay, that that could have happened. Let's, let's talk about that for a while. Okay, Why enough. are we not considering CJ, especially after the last game when Mullen threw that pick six and he, you know, what what is going on there? And I've, I've heard some rumblings and maybe there's some kind of an issue with him and Shanahan, which I kind of have a hard time believing, but I don't understand why Mullins is the guy and why we're not considering CJ and why we're not kind of playing them a little bit against each other or with each other ra rather because I think that they both have strengths so it's weird to me that Mullins is the guy as far as that goes I mean I'm, I'm just looking at CJ Beathard's track record with us what does he want in his career literally one game <laughs> yeah um and, and that's took it yeah yeah and Mullins took over from there obviously what happened the last time we saw CJ um, there was a little bit of an open competition in practice mm -hmm. that week. It seems like Nick walked away with it. Yep. And 
I guess at this point, Kyle's just looking at it like, is it really an upgrade? What are we even doing if we're doing this? I mean, I guess you can evaluate CJ a little bit more if you want, because we know this is a lost season anyway. Um, we know he can throw have... a deep ball. And that's, that's a pretty much all we know that CJ can do. Yeah, uh, hell, his but that's, a, but that's the thing. We know, we know that he can throw a deep ball, and we know that Mullins kind of can't, or at least not consistently, and that's usually when we get the, the pick six or those type of things. If we have two pretty good backup quarterbacks, no one thinks that they should be starters or some people do. I certainly don't. Then wh why don't we kind of play them together almost like with what, um, you know, what, what they used to do with Kaepernick and with Smith, you know, like why can't CJ just get a few snaps here or there and we need him to throw a deep ball. That's what I don't understand. I think it's just one of those things. It's quarterback, um, yeah. you know, quarterback, obviously there's only one guy on the field most of the time. And yes, we can, you can get a little bit cute and put like a, as you mentioned, Cap and Smith together on the field from time to time, but usually there has to be one guy. And there yep. has to be one guy to pregame sure. the rest of the week. And For sure. Nick is a smart guy. He knows Shanahan's offense. I think it's hard for him, to, hard for those type of quarterbacks to split snaps, especially when, yes, CJ can throw a deep ball, but he doesn't do that much different than Nick otherwise. Um, and I think it's hard too for the team, obviously. Obviously, uh, if you're in the center, you're the wide receivers, game play calls from different people, even though we know Shan true. at this point, That's Shanahan true. should just be driving the entire ship. <laughs> yeah, true. True. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, but uh, uh, either way, if we're having debates between CJ Beathard and Nick Mullins in week 15, you know how bad of a year it's been. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Well, let's get back into this. So uh, the Detroit Lions are going into Tennessee. They are 11 point underdogs over under 51 and a half. Um, hearing Matthew Stafford's doubtful for this game. So I think mm -hmm. this line might have shifted a little bit more in the recent days. Um, I don't think it would have been nearly as large had Matthew Stafford been playing, especially mm -hmm. since the Titans can't rush the quarterback. And that has been a thing that has been haunting them in recent weeks. That hurt them big time against uh, Cleveland. And yeah. if Stafford wins in this game, I might have even took the Lions as an upset pick. But knowing what they are doing, knowing that they're going to have a backup, it's going to be the Titans. They just need to just feed Derrick Henry a, a thousand percent feed Derrick Henry and you know their secondary has been kind of hit or miss a little little trashy in the last few weeks um but yeah if Stafford's out I would hammer the Tennessee Titans for sure speaking of eventual 49ers quarterbacks Deshaun Watson will be playing against now I'm kidding <laughs> he's gonna be playing against the Indianapolis Colts here uh seven and a half points uh I called last week Deshaun and the Texans not having the best day against the Chicago Bears. Obviously, yeah. they got just absolutely destroyed. At, the, at this point, they have Romeo Grinnell as their head coach. Right. They've been having a, a bad year, and they have no GM. It, it's a bad situation going on with Houston. At the same time, they gave the Colts a little bit of a game the last time these two teams went up against each other. Seven and a half. I don't like that. Seven and a half um, for Houston? Uh, Houston? Mi minus seven and a half for the Colts. For the Colts. Ooh. Um, what's the over under 51, 51, I would probably yeah, go more towards the total on that one. I think the, the Colts offense can, can move the ball down the field and score. And obviously we know that Deshaun Watson can, um, the defense for Houston has been kind of hit or miss. I think JJ Watt has had some big moments, but certainly they've kind of let people run the score up on them a little bit. So I would probably lean towards the over on that one. Okay. And as far as the winner, yeah, the Colts. I mean, they, they, the they just need to keep winning to win, to lock up that division at this point because Tennessee's right there on their ass. Um, yeah, I think the Colts are a better team. They're more well-rounded than, than the Texans are. The Texans should have never got rid of DeAndre Hopkins. That was literally the dumbest thing they could have done. I'll always give them a chance, though, because they have the best player in the field. When you have Deshaun, Deshaun Watson. Watson, that's yeah. always going to be the best thing. Even though, I guess you could say DeForest Buckner when he's on the field probably might be. I'm sorry. I'm pulling at the heartstrings again. Uh, miss you that, was, that was a sad one. That was a really sad one. Okay. Uh, these teams haven't matched up since week one, but the New England Patriots will be going into Miami for their traditional late in the year Miami game. New England Patriots. Miami is a three point favorite. Um, I guess the script is flipped though, because obviously mm -hmm. Miami's favorite in this one versus 
the Patriots just I like Miami. I like Miami. I think that the Patriots, they've had a really hard time since, you know, some of their big defense guys uh, sat this season out and Cam has been hit or miss. He's had moments and they don't really, he doesn't really have any weapons to go to. Edelman is injured and old and, you know, the Patriots, it's, it's going to be a, a long time for the Patriots or anywhere near what they used to be. And, you know, Miami's on the uptick right now. And so I would, I would take Miami. I just want that to a breakout game. I yeah. haven't seen it yet. Um, if, if you just watch like intensely on the dolphins, like um, Tua just, I don't know. I want to see what I saw in Alabama from him. Mm -hmm. I know it's a little bit different because he actually downgraded in wide receiving core. If you think about it, going yep. from the Alabama Crimson Tide locker room to the totally. dolphins. Um, will this be the one to do it against Bill Belichick and his defense against a sophomore or rookie quarterback? You know, I'm going to take the Patriots actually on the road. Okay. Here. All right. Yeah, Opposite I, sides of this one. Yeah. We've got, we've got to be split on a couple here. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So NFC North, um, both these teams are actually still in the playoff hunt. I know we completely discounted the bears because they had their rough uh, stretch of games here, but they're technically yeah. still hanging around going against the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota at home is a three point favorite. 47 is the over under line there. Um, what time is this game? This game is going to be taking place at 12 central standard time. So early okay, game yeah, for you out there in the West coast. Yeah. Well, it's because it's hard to take uh, cousins on prime time because the guy is just not very good. Not very clutch on prime time. Um, but what's, what's the, uh, what's the line? Uh, three points, uh, minus three, Minnesota. Minus three, Minnesota in, in Minneapolis, right? Mm -hmm. I would take the Vikings. Make the Vikings. Yeah. For sure. I mean, that offense is just Dalvin Cook's having a great year. I feel like Cousins not great in prime time, but he's been he's been doing pretty good. And I just can't trust the offense for the Bears. They have a good defense, but no. Well, the last time these teams played, um, Akeem Hicks uh, went down a little early in the game or mid game, I believe. Um, Dalvin Cook had 30 carries for less than 100 yards. So the Bears do a they great were able job to of up, containing yeah. him. And it makes sense if you're going to do one thing against the Minnesota Vikings offense, contain Dalvin Cook and make mm -hmm. it all about Kirk Cousins. I will say that I think Kirk Cousins will make enough big plays, enough good throws in this game to get them the overall win. Um, and they need it. Obviously, Arizona is challenging them for that final playoff spot. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bears, I think that they're at the point where they're, yes, again, they're hanging around mostly because of their early season success. Mm -hmm. But they know Mitch Trubisky's not the guy. They, He's they not know. the guy. He's they not the guy. Yeah. They have to move on. They have to draft a quarterback, especially Matt Nagy. If you're him, you need to just get your own quarterback in there. And I want to give Matt Nagy one more year. Uh, Ryan Pace needs to go, their GM. But mm -hmm. uh, Matt Nagy, I feel he came in there. Mitch Trubisky was already there. And he had to teach a guy that was drafted under John Fox his offense. And over time, it just showed Mitch doesn't have the arm strength. Yes, he's a little bit more mobile. But it, it's still just an anomaly, even with last week's game, that he was even drafted over Deshaun because obviously they both played in the ACC. So I don't understand that. If you told yeah. me he was drafted over Patrick Mahomes, I get you just because watching Patrick Mahomes college highlights, they're actually not that impressive or not as impressive as yeah. obviously what Deshaun did in college. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think. Yeah. Minnesota wins. I guess Minnesota wins. And by three, if it was three and a half, then then maybe, you know, that, that half point's always kind of like a killer and, and maybe the line will move a little bit towards that. But I mean, Thielen's still healthy, right? So yeah. Yeah. And even, the, the, yeah, I'm sure they're going to bottle up Dalvin Cook, but I think that the Vikings, I think the Vikings get three. Okay. By three. So Seattle, they are going to be facing the Washington football team. Seattle is a five and a half point favorite on the road with the over and under of 44 and a half. So low, low scoring game by Vegas standards. Low scoring. Yep. Um, I guess Which you would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so obviously Seattle's best success this year has come when Russell Wilson has been phenomenal playing out of his mind. And I don't he think he to. can do that against this Washington defense as yeah. much as I want to just put last week's game on Mullins. Um, you got to no. give respect to that front seven. Chase Young, Absolutely. they do a great job. And I think that Ron Rivera's defense can do enough to really put it on the run game. It's going to be on Ken, Chris Carson, and then be able to establish the run. And mm -hmm. 
if Seattle has enough weapons to go ahead and win five and a half points, so on the road, that's uh, against yeah, a surging Washington team. Well, is Alex Smith playing? Doesn't he have um, some that's kind of calf point. injury? That's a good point. I don't know what's going to be the verdict there as far as if he's going to play, because I know the medical staff probably is going to treat him with a little bit more kid gloves coming off an injury like that. Yeah. Given, I think uh, look, looking to your point too, looking at the defense and certainly that front from the Washington Redskins, how the run game for Seattle is okay, but it's not necessarily what it used to be. And if Alex Smith isn't playing, I would go under for sure. Yeah. As far as the win though, giving it to the Seahawks. The win I'm still going to give to the Seahawks. I do think that they are the, the better team. They are. I mean, their defense has been playing a little bit better ever since that Carlos Dunlap acquisition. Mm -hmm. Um, And if they are playing against Wayne Haskins, a younger quarterback, I think that they should do enough to disrupt him. I would say they'd have a chance if Smith plays just because the Smith style of play, you know, to keep the ball, play more conservative and uh, extend drives, keep keep the clock running. But um, if it is Dwayne Haskins, then it's definitely a Seattle. We'll see how Seattle, yeah, Seattle wins that game. I don't know if I give them the five and a half though, but I definitely think certainly if um, Smith isn't playing, the Redskins are going to have a hard time scoring. And then I think with that defense, the uh, the, the Seahawks have a hard time. So I'd I can go see like under 24, 21, something mm-hmm. like that. That's kind of mm-hmm. what I'm thinking. So yeah, I think, yeah, under that line there. Um, okay, this one should be a blowout. So not much uh, analysis needed here, but uh, Jaguars going into Baltimore, 13 point favorite. I mean, Baltimore has had such a tough time this season. It's like they kind of, they started a little bit shaky and, you know, we can't, they, they can't win against the Chiefs. Um, but Lamar looked incredible this last Monday night. What worries me is that he has to do everything himself for the most part. I know he did have that incredible uh, fourth down throw, but that's not really the norm for him. I always worry about him getting injured with the amount that he's running. But yeah, the Jaguars don't stand a chance. Was it cramping? I, well, okay. If he was sick, right. Coming off of COVID, your body's a little out of whack. And so I think, I think what everyone was joking about him having to use the bathroom was probably, that's what it looked like to me. Just that's what it looked trot. Like to me. The, if you saw the, like one yes. of the, and when he was him walking to the laundry room. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Especially that get out of the way, get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> just kind yes. of thing there. But I just, I couldn't believe that he just came in on fourth down and just was running for it. And he probably could have run it and got the first down, but saw the opening and, and that throw to the touchdown. I mean, that was, I think the best game of the season. Oh, it, it was so much fun down. to watch. Yeah. yeah. That that's easy. That's saints versus Niners from last year. That's the game of the yes. year right there. Oh God. That was such a great game. Again, we just got to bring in those positive vibes. Those good memories yes. there. Especially yes. because we have to talk about the Jets next. So the Jets, wow, this is probably the biggest line I think I've seen all year. Okay. 17 and a half points in favor of the Rams. No, I would never give 17 and a half points. That's, I don't like double digit spreads in general. Those are always like a tricky one. 17, that's pretty, that's crazy. Even for the Jets, that's crazy. Even for the Jets, for anyone, I would never lay 17 points. That's crazy. But I, but I, by the way, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lay them. I wouldn't give them plus 17 either. I wouldn't bet on the Jets at all. Uh, I would stay off of this game. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Damn. 0 and 13. There we go. Okay. Uh, this is finally a good matchup here. We've got the Eagles going into Arizona. Arizona mm-hmm. is a six point favorite. Obviously, 1 and 0 for the Jalen Hurts led. Philadelphia Eagles. Well, here's the thing with Jalen Hurts. Um, well, Carson Wentz has had a bad, a bad season, and especially with getting paid the amount that he got paid, it's been, it's been interesting to to watch him. And and I think that they should have started Jalen Hurts a while ago. It was weird when he would come in for one snap and then come back out. And yes, he had a great game against the Saints, especially if you look at the defense for the Saints. That's a very impressive win. But the reality is, is that. You know, there was no tape really that you could watch on Jalen Hurts. He was in two different systems in college. And so I'll be curious to see this weekend having, you know, teams being able to watch the tape and kind of figure him out a little bit if he'll be as successful this weekend. Um, But I definitely think they made the right decision in starting Jalen Hurts. I think Carson Wentz is done. The Cardinals, though, when you look at them, what they've done over the last month, they've been in a little bit of rough stretch. Obviously, they won this past week against the Giants, and everyone was high on the Giants yeah. coming off their recent victory over Seattle. Mm-hmm. But overall, they had lost at that point for their previous five, and they could have lost five straight if it wasn't for that miraculous uh, 
Kyler Murray to DeAndre Hopkins yes. touchdown at the end. Yes. Yeah. Um, going into this game against the Eagles, I've said I think their offense could be a little bit slowed down. Obviously, Jalen Hurts, it's a more time possession offense. Mm-hmm. It's going to limit the amount of touches for a Kyler Murray to big, mm-hmm. big plays. And I'm actually picking an underdog here. I, I think I think the Eagles are going to go into Arizona and get a big victory because – I think Doug Peterson, as much as I've said that I think he's fired after the end of this year, I think mm-hmm. he's better coach than Cliff Kingsbury. And I think as we get closer to the playoff race, yep. this is the type of game that I could see coaching becoming a big factor. Definitely. And I think, you know, ever since Kyler Murray kind of injured his shoulder, he just hasn't been as productive or as good. And I think that's kind of hurt their offense a little bit. Um, I could I could see the upset on this one with the Eagles. What's the What's the spread again, though? Six points minus six Arizona. All right, I'll ride with you on this one. I'll give the six points to the Eagles. Hey, fly, Eagles, fly. Fly, okay. Eagles, fly. Eagles fans are some of the funniest, by the way. I think my favorite fan base, uh, and this may be controversial, obviously, because I have so many Niners faithful to follow me. Mm-hmm. My favorite fan base is Bills Mafia, honestly. Yeah, I mean, well, they're nuts. <laughs> that was the yes. sad part about Monday Night Football is we couldn't see them acting insane, yeah. The absolute insanity of Bills Mafia, just, mm-hmm. you don't see it anywhere else. You don't yeah. see it. I would agree. Is, is the over unders too obvious in this one? Because we have the Kansas City Chiefs going into New Orleans. The over under is 51 and a half, and the Chiefs are three point favorites. I don't think Drew Brees is going to be back for this one. So it's going to be another Taysom Hill show. How are you feeling about this one? Um, okay, three and a half. And what was it? 55? Something real high. 51 and a half. 51 and a half. Um, yeah, I don't think Drew is back. I did read that he's been practicing, um, but I don't think he's going to be, I don't think they're going to start him for this game. Uh, coming off of that loss, though, f- for them and the Eagles, they're going to be pretty motivated. Um, I'm still going to go with the Chiefs. I feel like for the most part, the Chiefs are, are a, a good, solid bet. They're almost like what the Patriots used to be. Um, and at a three and a half, I, I would give it to the Chiefs. It's just hard to go against them right now. They feel like yeah. the best team in the league. They feel like they're on pace for that Super Bowl repeat. Yeah. Um, I and just when I really think about like all the quarterback talent I've seen over the years, honestly, Patrick Mahomes is it. Like oh, it, he is. He's just, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. As much as it pains me, I hate that he had to win his first Super Bowl against the Niners. But I know. Like uh, just when I watch this guy, and I think about all the quarterbacks we've seen in our lifetime, obviously Tom Payton, uh, mm-hmm. a little bit of Brett Favre, um, and there. Yeah. But they just haven't had the same Aaron Rodgers, yeah, hit factor. And obviously you have Andy Reid there, mm-hmm. and such dynamic weapons, and Tyree oh. Kill, Travis yeah. Kelsey, and then they get new guys in there, McKee, McCole Hardman, mm-hmm. Ceh. They just keep building and building. And eventually this guy is going to add new pitches to his game. And yep. it's only going to get worse for the rest of the league from that point. I agree. I agree. So I would, I would definitely, I definitely think they went by three and a half. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Uh, Chiefs fire him up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sunday night, the Cleveland Browns are going into New York to face those surging giants coming off mm-hmm. a unfortunate loss in their playoff hopes. Uh, Cleveland is a four and a half point favorite on the road over under sitting at 44. I do worry about Cleveland, another primetime game coming off that hard loss to the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I always, was a, they've been yeah. an emotional high because they obviously had that mm-hmm. huge win against Tennessee mm-hmm. and then they slope on down. They have to face this Baltimore team in which it's such a tight contested game, game of the year, as you yep. mentioned, mm-hmm. and then they play this New York giants team which in theory, they are a much better team than them. They should be a lock favorite, but I don't, I kind of feel nervous about this one. Yeah. I mean, uh, by the way, I almost, uh, it's hard to trust Baker Mayfield with anything, right? I mean, the guy is so hit or miss. He's either phenomenal, like, and by the way, he was great um, against the Ravens. I mean, he played great. So that was two weeks in a row, which by the way, it doesn't happen all the time with Baker Mayfield, two weeks in a row, really playing you know, amazing, uh, even though they, even though they had the loss, I think there's a lot for them to be proud of and to kind of take with them into the next game. So I kind of think that they're on a high right now and knowing what we know about the Browns and about Baker Mayfield, I agree with you and being a little bit worried and laying money with them um, just because they're not consistent. I mean, that's the one thing that Cleveland is they're having a winning season for the first time since I don't even know when, um, but at four and a half points, <sighs> 
against the Giants. What's the total? 44. 44. I would I would lean more over. I would go over the total on this okay. one. Okay. I think that it's going to be a little low scoring. Uh, gosh, a 44 though. That is 44 is about. low. Yeah. And, and look at what the, the Browns have been able to do the last couple of games. That's so. true. Like I, I mentally, I just, this season's tough for me because I have to separate them from being the Cleveland Browns, yeah. obviously. So, but uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? They got to win this game. Let's go with the Browns. Uh, They're going to win the game. Yeah, you know, as much as I've liked what the Giants have done this year, they've really pieced it together. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, we'll go through. <laughs> it just, it's the faith. It's the, it's the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> yes. Well, and, okay. and by the way, this season has just been insane anyways. It's like anyone that you think should be a lock, it's like, it's just been, it's been crazy. So. Yeah, we'll I mean, that's 2020 in a nutshell. The mm-hmm. Cleveland Browns are in nine and four and in line for a playoff spot. There yes. Wow. Okay, Monday night game. This is one of those situations which Monday night football wishes they could flex like Sunday night. But mm-hmm. uh, the Steelers coming off back to back losses. Thankfully, they get to face the Cincinnati Bengals. They are 13 point favorites. We're facing Brian Allen or Ryan Finley. Here's it the is- thing I don't, I don't, I don't like double digit spreads ever. So, like 13 points, I never want to give that to anyone. And the Steelers their defense has been great, but unfortunately they haven't given their defense really a break at all because the offense has been so shaky. I mean, their receiving core keeps dropping everything and they had some, they had some drops even in their last game. So I, I, I think that the Steelers win this game for sure, but I don't know that I'd give them 13 points. Well, you know, what helps to leave you a little bit unshooken is facing the, I don't even know that's a word, um, but (laughs) Facing the Bengals defense. The Bengals, yeah. Yeah, the last time they played, Big Ben had 377 yards, four touchdowns, and that was still when Joe Burrow was on the field. Yeah. I think uh, now that this team has kind of packed it in, packed their shit and went home for the year, I think that the the Steelers should be able to get right in this game. And I'm not even scared of 13 points on that one. All right, so you'll give them at least two touchdowns. Exactly, with my fictional money that I'm not betting on this one. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Okay, Katie, well, that wraps up week 15 in there. Uh, so obviously first time on the show, we ask all our guests this question, favorite all time sports movie. Oh God. I mean, there's just so many. I love sports music, probably Rudy. Um, just because like, what a, what a story of triumph that is, right? It's like this small kid that shouldn't even go to Notre Dame. And then he figures out a way to get in there. And then he figures out a way to get on the team and he's not going to play. And then, you know, when they're chanting his name at the end, um, Rudy's just, I think, one of the best football movies ever. I completely agree. And back, obviously, Joe Montana was on that team. So fun yes. fact <laughs> yes. for people that don't know that. Um, okay, well, Katie Mox Betts, tell us everything you're up to, what you're working on, projects, where to fall, all that good stuff. Yeah, so um, you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok. It's at Katie Mox Betts. Uh, every every week I'll do a few kind of game analysis and, and breakdown of, of what I think is going to happen in that game. Um, and then I am starting a podcast actually with some handicappers uh, from TroyWins.com. So it's going to be called Capping Over Cocktails. I'm hosting the podcast and uh, it's really going to be like a new take on sports betting and handicapping. Obviously sports betting is only getting bigger. It's being legalized in more states as it comes. I mean, I think you read the news, like in New Jersey, they just crushed like $900 million last month in wagers in just New Jersey. And so what it will be is we'll talk about hot topics in sports and then, um, you know, I'll kick it over to the cappers where they'll kind of give you some, um, some systems that they run to kind of help empower new bettors and, and people who've been betting to to be able to read the lines and to to make more educated bets um, that way. And then they'll give it, you know, a free play of the day and those kind of things. Um, and then I have another exciting project that I can't really talk about um, quite yet, but hopefully can soon. Um, but there is a, a show that I'm that I'm working on that hopefully I'll be able to share pretty soon. Okay. Well, we look forward to that secret announcement. Top secret, very secretive but we hope to hear about it soon. But all right, Slump Busters, you know what to do. Go ahead and support Katie. Go ahead and support us and hit that subscribe button. Leave a five-star review on iTunes. It really helps us a lot. We had a lot of feedback from a lot of our former guests on the show and huge, huge in those algorithm battles. Um, Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. 
manscaped.com's promo code slum save 20 percent off plus free shipping and handling razorsport.com and most party folks i need you to stay safe happy and healthy and we'll see you next time